Hi all! In this tutorial we're going to learn how to create something like what you see in the screen. It's a tutorial for all levels. If you know nothing, you will learn how to do this nice graphic. If you know much more and you don't know how to achieve realistic looks for your graphics, you will learn how to do it. So let's go for it! Okay, so before we dive into the design itself, the tutorial itself, I would like to talk about this word, skeuomorphism. We have here a definition, and so you can learn a little bit about this kind of design. It's been used for a long time, especially by Apple, in these designs where um, you would design things that uh, have a counterpart in, in real life. So if you wanted to design, I'm going to show you some examples here, a notepad, you would just do it in a way that looks like real paper. It's really nice, but today we're not using that anymore uh, in design so much. Um, you can also read about flat design, which is more or less what everybody's doing now. Uh, still, skeuomorphism is really nice as a means of conveying some ideas, especially today. It's been used a lot in games and in any case, it's just a nice way of doing graphics. So let's go for it. Let's start. So the first thing I would like to ask you is to follow along with me as I'm creating this graphic. Just don't change it too much. If you want to change the LED lights, that's fine. But try to just reproduce exactly more or less the same colors because once you understand the principles for creating this kind of graphic, you just can, when you feel more comfortable, you just can go and look for another example. I would always recommend though, going on the internet and copying some other designers stuff in order to do your exercises. Always starting with graphics, not with real life objects. And this is because you're going to get some problems solved for you. And the only thing you're going to be learning here is how to look at things, uh, how to understand this has a blurry outline and this is a gradient from gray to white, things like that. Those are solved for you by someone that has more experience. Once you understand the principles, you can just go take some real life objects, try to reproduce them with not so many hints, try to reproduce what you see in there. Until you get to, to a point where you will need much less information in there for you in order to understand how to place everything in your graphic. That's the way I learned and I can tell you it worked for me. Um, I want to show you this image. This, this one is a picture, a real life picture of a um, Kawasaki Vulcan motorbike. And you see all the information in there. I translated into this graphic. This is all vectors. This is all layers. This is all created layer by layer, gradients, um, shadows, things like that. There's nothing traced in here. But obviously to get here, I had to first learn the basic, the principles, how to look at things. Okay, so let's go with the graphic. Now, what we see basically here, it's concentric circles. So we grab the lips tool and we trace the first circle here. Now I have it in green, so I need to change the color. I'm going to put this one down here because otherwise it's going to be overlapped. So we grabbed, we grabbed the fill tool and we drag like so. Now we just need to change the stops color. Okay. So we come here and we say, I mean, the, something like this and prefer to be in the blue side of things <laughs> and something like this. Now I just move it a little bit like so to get a little bit more of the color I want. It's not exactly the same, but you know, you get the principle, you get the idea of how this is done. Now we want to create this one right behind it. So we command C, command V. And now we have a copy of it. We grab the one below, we click shift and we make it a little bit bigger. Now. I grab both of them by dragging, or you can just grab them from the layers panel. And in range, we align horizontally and vertically. Okay, so we have them concentrical. Now you see this needs to be lighter. So again, we grab our gradient tool 
and we change a little bit to a softer color here. What we need to do now is just, you know, play with this in such a way that things start to look a little bit more like they should. So basically we have this. We will take care of details later on. Now the next thing we see here is this this is quite important, okay? This is something I always repeat. Some people tend to think that just because they see here a uh, black outline, call it, or a stroke, they just go, come here, click here and say, oh, and now I put a stroke, let's say black stroke, and make it thicker. Okay, that's an error. That's not good. It's not a good idea. And well, that's, that's not a good idea mainly because it doesn't really look very natural and at the end of the day you want to be flexible with your graphics and if you use a stroke of course you can add a gradient to it but you can do more things with the shape than with the stroke so we take oh we take yeah this one we get rid of the stroke which is not a good idea and we again command c command v copy this Click shift, make it bigger. Let's give it, uh, let's give it like this, a black color, something like this. That's maybe too much. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's see if this works. Range, align, vertical and horizontal. This is still a little bit too big. So something like this. Oh, ah, yep. So here and there, okay. Now we have this one here. As you can see, this is very crisp and quite blurry here. We'll take care of that later. Now the next one, if you didn't guess, <laughs> is gonna be this one circle here. And again, I grab, for example, this one, and I'll grab this one and not this one because it has already the color. So just put it on the back make it bigger or uh, maybe even bigger oh it's gonna come out like a little bit big but i can make it smaller later okay some like this even maybe bigger let's try with this we grab them all and arrange vertical uh -huh, horizontal vertical something like this okay now i start tweaking colors because i, I don't want all the light coming from one side like like this it doesn't look very natural so grab this here i could just copy from my reference but i'm just gonna make it on the fly something like this okay uh-huh good i need to change a little bit more of this i'm gonna get my colors a little bit better i'm gonna make this faster because this is just tweaking colors. I'm not going to tell anything important now. Just want to get my, my colors right. Okay, be back in a second. Okay, so once we have this, it still looks very flat. Now it's when where the um, nice stuff begins. So what do we have in here? We have a shadow, okay? So we, the only thing we have to do is we grab this, we come to effects and we place a shadow, which is outer shadow, this one. Okay, so first off the offsets, now the radius, something like this, yep, maybe even the darker shadow, more offset, just remember you can move it around, but well, obviously we want it there, okay. So we have it there, we have it there, great. So what I was talking about, learning how to look at things. If you, if you take a look at this, it looks quite sharp. It's just, you know, this is not natural. This is too sharp, even for being a, um, not an organic piece. It's just too sharp. Things are not exactly like that most of the times. See this one? This is, you know, softer, nicer, okay? So well, that's the first thing I have to take care of because this is like 
really not very realistic. So what do I see in here? All of a sudden it goes from this color and if you can just look closer, well, I don't remember, but probably I put some kind of um, inner shadow or inner glow in here because it's a little bit um, lighter. Yeah. So I'm going to exactly do that. Uh, um, inner shadow. So I come here and now up, offset, I have to move the angle, radius a little bit less, but I want to make it visible enough, uh -huh. something like this. Well, as you can see here now, it's not that sharp, so that helps a lot. Next one is you see a highlight here. Well, in this case, I didn't use the same methods and it's because I wanted it to finish before um, probably uh, an inner shadow would, would uh, allow me. So usually what I do with this kind of highlights is I take this, copy it, have a copy here. I'm going to get rid of the effects just like this. And now I command C, command V. I have another copy here, as you can see. Now I move it. I put them one on top of the other, aligned exactly, like you can only see one, but there are two. Now I move it two bits, pixel down, two pixels to the right, two pixel down, two pixels to the right again. So four in total, down and to the right. I grab them both. You can see the differences between them. Now they are a little bit, they are not aligned. They are moved. And now I come to the booleans and say subtract. What do I have in here? A crescent. And this crescent, I'm going to put on top. Uh, I'm going to reverse this to see the color. Wow, it's so dark. This is not what I'm looking for. So I come to color and I want my wheel. Come here and say, okay, I want something like this to make the highlight. And because again, it's a little bit artificial, it looks a little bit artificial, I'm going to put a little bit of a Gaussian blur in here. Now it looks better, okay? So not perfect yet, but it starts to look a little bit, you know, more like, like I want. We're gonna do exactly the same for this one in here, okay? So we grab this one, we copy and paste it. We have a copy here. We copy paste it again. We have two of them. So one, two, three, four pixel, bottom, four to the right, I graph both of them, boolean, and again I have my crescent, put it on top, and now instead of looking for a new color, have it here, I just grab this one, command C, I grab the new crescent, command shift V, and I have the same color for both of them. It's not so visible because this background is lighter than this one, but now from that point, I can take it and make it a little bit lighter. And so it goes. I have it. And the same one is going to be the same principle for this one in outside. I'm not going to do it so it doesn't take a lifetime. Now we need this white circle in there. So quickly I do it. This is it. Make it a little bit bigger with the shift, something like this. Uh, color, color me, white, something like this, yeah, it'd be nice to just make them aligned, as we did before, something like this, okay, oh, and we need this one here, which is basically copying this one, making it a little bit bigger, and now applying a bit of Gaussian blur, or a bit, a bit a lot. <laughs> of Gaussian Blur, okay? And I align it with the other one which is in here. It's better probably going through the layers panel. Okay, we have it aligned. Okay, now important things and interesting things. How to create these LED lights in such a way that they go along the circle? Okay, the only way I found to do this in Affinity Designer is with this method. 
I picked the double star tool. If you don't find it here, for the people that don't know so much, you may find it in this combo. Let's see, by clicking here. Okay, so you grab it and you drag it, click in shift. Now you pull this down, you pull this up and you have your star. Obviously, I need to give it a color, otherwise I'm not gonna see a thing. I'm like this, I don't need this. And now, instead of five points, I say 12, okay? So I grab this uh, star, and oh, I'm gonna place it on, on top of this uh, knob. But for me to be easy, I want this snapping on, see here? I don't remember, I think it was, yeah, it's this one. Yeah, okay. So as you can see here, this is helping me to find the middle point, the center which makes it much easier. Now, next step. You may be wondering, what the hell is this for? Okay, quite easy. Now, let's take the circle tool, the lips tool, and let's create our little, sorry, our little circle here. Say, oh, I don't need this anymore. So, it go like this, okay? Probably I don't even need to put a fill color on it because this is just for a demonstration. Well, yeah, I'm gonna put it so you see it better. Just this color, for example. Okay, so we have a little, say, LED light, light in here. And now I would like it to be a little bit more in the center. And again, if I want to find my center, yeah, see? That's great. So anyway. We have it here and now what we need to do is just do the same for the rest. But you don't want to do this manually because it's a pain. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you need to do is to find the rotation center of this little circle. It may sound like horrible to remember, but it's really easy to to grab the, the, the concept. And I recommend you to see also my tutorial for the mandala where I explain more about this, how to use this thing. So. In the move tool, you're going to have this contextual menu. And in this contextual menu, you get these icons here. Well, this one, the one with the crosshair. So you click in there. And as you can see here now, see, you get your um, rotation center. Because we want to rotate this all over this um, star. What we need to do first is just put it down. Oh. I repeat, put it down to the center. But again, I'm going to use the snapping. So I will find exactly the middle point I need like that. I mean, you can do it also without having the snapping on, but you're not going to really see which one is the center. So that's why this is really good to use snapping on. And we say, OK, this is my middle, my center. And now what we're going to be doing is command J, okay? As you can see here, now we have two. I repeat it, okay? So we have one here, command J. We have a copy. This is the smart copy working, okay? Now, graph your little circle from there. Click Shift, and it's gonna move 40, uh, sorry, 15 degrees from where it was, okay? And now you, you just need to do, you don't need to repeat this again. What you need to do is again, command J, command J, command J, 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 until it <laughs> completes the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so we have now all the little lights in there. Okay, so this is the best way I found to just make this kind of like LED lights around the circle. You can use it for many other things. Now, I don't really want all these lights in here, so I'm gonna get rid of uh, more or less these ones. Yep. And my star, my double star, I just, you know, get it out of my way. So now I have this. The only thing left for me to do is just give it a, you know, effect for it to be more like shiny. So we come here, and as you can see, for people not. Um, knowing oh i think this is yep it is locked 
So for people not knowing so much, what we have in here is just basically a gradient from here to there, the two different colors, and then we come to effects and we have an inner shadow. Yep, which is blue. And basically that's in another effect, which is an out outer glow. If you take a look, see in there, that's the outer glow. So nothing really special. Same for this uh, other shape in here, inner shadow, outer glow, make it look a little bit like it's uh, light. We saw in other tutorials how to create light effects, so if you didn't yet, just make sure to take a look. And now, next thing, not to take, you know, a lifetime, and because I'm sure you understood what I meant by that, and if you didn't, you just can ask me again, I just copy the effects for the ones not remembering. I just grab whatever I'm interested in copying. For example, this one, I command C and then I come here or come wherever, like say this one, and I click command shift V. And in that way, it's gonna copy exactly the, the same attributes, okay? So right now for this one, it would be, um, for example, something like, yeah, like this, I'm gonna get closer. So I make sure it looks more or less like I want. Every time you see this little orange dot, it means you can tweak it, see? Rounded angles, straight angles. And again, because I copied before the attributes for this, I command shift V and it's gonna grab the same attributes as the LED lights, the other LED light. Okay, so basically I think I went through all the mysteries to create something like this. Uh, if I can look now, I see I'm missing here a crescent, this one, which would be just a crescent with a boolean, subtract boolean and some Gaussian blue added to it. So it makes um, for a more indented look. Uh, these ones here, these little dots in here, which is like uh, LED lights that are off, well, they have no mystery either. It's just a circle with an inner shadow applied to it, so it looks more like it's off. Okay, and um, fine tuning things like um, this gradient is a little bit flat. Well, I would like it to, to be a little bit more like, uh, you know, more from dark gray to lighter gray. I think I left it a little bit flat in here, but basically I went through all the things you need to know in order to recreate this yourself. And please subscribe to my channel if you liked it. Subscribe to it if you didn't too. <laughs> and leave some comments, likes, etc. You know, all the stuff. Thank you. Bye.